Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Throttle functions and debounce functions are often both compared and confused, and both can help the performance of your web apps in different situations. Today we'll look at those differences. Let's get started building a throttle function. You can see I've got Visual Studio Code here on the left. On the right, I've got Chrome open to DevTools, so I have a very small page here with a button that says throttle and the web console on the right. You can see in Visual Studio Code, I've got an init app function that grabs the button with a query selector and using an event listener, it listens for the click event and calls the click log function. And that just logs click to the console. And you can see the init app function doesn't fire until the DOM content has been loaded. Now this is a lot just to log a click to the console, but this is what I need in order to show you throttle today. So let's get started with this throttle function. Okay, let's just call it throttle. And then we're going to pass in a function and a delay time. And so since we're passing in a function, you may already think about this. Throttle is a decorator function where we pass in another function and then it adds additional functionality to that function that is passed in. So we'll start by defining a last time. And I'll use let because we're going to reassign a value We'll just start it out at zero. And then let's go ahead and put a log statement here because I want to emphasize that the actual throttle function is called immediately. So I'll put called throttle immediately. And we'll see this in the console when it happens. After that, we need to return a function. And here it will receive the args as any function could or should. And then inside of this anonymous function that we're returning, and that's what this is right here, we'll start by defining now. We already had the last time above, but now let's go ahead and define what now currently is, and we'll set it to a new date and then call get time. So now we have a now value. And now we'll just do some simple math. We'll say if now minus the last time value is less than the delay that is passed into the throttle function. Say we set that to, uh, I'll probably set it high in the tutorial so we can see what's happening. Say we set it to one or two seconds. And then if that time has not expired yet, essentially if now minus less time, last time is less than the delay, at that point we're just going to return and basically ignore the request to call the function that is passed into throttle. So at this point we'll say the time hasn't expired yet and that's essentially what throttle does. It allows a function to be called but only at a certain interval and that's what we could call this actually delay. We could call it interval because originally last time is zero. So there won't be an issue calling it a calling the function that's passed in immediately. So we'll set last time to now if we have passed this and we're not returned. So we're resetting last time essentially at this point. And then we'll just call the function with the arguments here. And if we save that, we can break this down. So what happens is throttle allows the function to be called besides throttle itself being called, then when the button is clicked, it will return this anonymous function, which you could consider the event handler then for the button. And it will allow this to be called immediately, but then it will have to wait a set interval, this delay time, until it can be called again. And so let's go ahead and add this to our listener above. Right now, notice it just calls click log. So if I click this, it just allows me to keep racking up the clicks over here in the console and it doesn't slow me down at all. So we're going to change that behavior by adding throttle here in the event listener. So we need to pass throttle right here and call it. And now we'll pass in our function. I'll say click log. And then let's make this two seconds, which is a really big interval to wait in between. That's much higher than usually set, but this will really display 
what we're talking about here. And so we see throttle says called throttle immediately. That's what I was talking about. Throttle itself is called immediately. And this was logged to the console so we can see that. And then this last time value here is in a closure. So this anonymous function still has access to last time and it can reset that value. It won't always be zero. It's whatever we set it to when that gets through. So now when I click once, it will let it uh, execute immediately and we get the click and that's what we expect. Now after two seconds, it will let me do it again, but maybe you'll be able to hear how many times I click and I'll count down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. There we go. So I only got a third click when I got to about 11. So it allowed me to click 10 more times after the first click before it called the function again. And that's what throttle does. It ignores those repeated calls to the function until the interval essentially says, okay, you can call the function again. So now to demonstrate this even more so, this would be your throttle function, by the way, and of course eliminate the console log, but this would be the throttle function. Now I'm going to put in some more code to just help demonstrate that you would want to remove as well. So let's go ahead and take advantage of this closure and define an ID here, and I'll set it equal to zero also. And then after now is defined, Let's go ahead and increment the ID. So this will increment with every click, even if the function is not fired. It will increment the ID value. But now only if we allow the function to be fired will I log the click ID or the event ID. Let's call it the event ID. So now I'm going to log to the console and I'll put event ID and then we will log our ID value that we have set. So now we'll only see this event ID value when the function fires. So now you'll see how many times I've clicked in between because it will increment up. It won't show you every ID. It will only show the ID when the event fires. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There we go. I was able to get in about 10 clicks. I guess I averaged five clicks per second. And then we saw the event ID again at 11. And we could keep going. We got one immediately, and then we got 25, and then 36, 47. I'm uh, keeping a pretty good tempo right there, pretty much 11 between each one. So, or yeah, 11 between each one. So that's how throttle works. Now, if you think about where to apply this, We'll go back and compare to debounce just a little bit. But what I always think of with throttle, and I'm clicking a button as fast as I can, which isn't that fast, but it reminds me of an old arcade game where I would be mashing the button like Space Invaders or Galaga, and you could throttle that uh, fire button back because you'd want it to fire and you'd be smashing the button as fast as you could, but it would only fire at a set interval, and that's how you're throttling the button. Okay, in my previous tutorial on debounce, I actually showed how you could apply debounce to a input where we filtered blog results, and that would be good, like a search input, and you don't want the API call to fire until somebody stops typing. That's a good application of debounce. But for throttle, let's think about maybe how we could apply it to our web app I said scroll, here we go, scroll log with the scroll event. And that's just a little bit different because say we're resizing or repainting the DOM and that would be the other one actually on the window resize where you wouldn't want it to fire all the time. That could really make your application laggy or seem like it almost locks up. What you would want to do is fire it at a set interval and then it could resize or on scroll it could do something else and maybe paint something else or change the uh, browser experience in some way. And while I won't be giving an example of changing the browser experience, we will look at the scroll event itself here. So we've got now a scroll log function. And so now we're going to say window dot add event listener, listen for the scroll event, and then we'll call throttle, and then we'll call our 
scroll log and let's set this to something more like 200 milliseconds which is more like what you would typically see and notice we called throttle immediately twice now i need to go ahead and change the index.html and let's just change this to get a little taller page so let's set the height of the page to 300 viewport height just for temporarily here so we can scroll if we come back now i'll start scrolling look at the event IDs and the scrolling notification in the console window. Notice we're not getting synchronous 201, 202, 203. There's a little bit of space between the event IDs when I'm scrolling. And here we'll scroll back down to where we can see that again. So we're jumping now from 304 to 316 and so on. So it's not registering every call to the function scroll log it's only doing it at a set interval of 200 milliseconds between the call and that's what you want so maybe you're applying uh, parallax to a website which is kind of a popular effect to apply and if you're listening to that scroll event uh, that could make the page really jerky, laggy. It just depends on how it's processed and how it's repainted. But overall, adding something like throttle to that could really help it out. So how do we remember when to use throttle versus when to use debounce? Well, here's the golden rule. Debounce is used when you're only interested in the final state. So if you don't wanna fire that API call until the user has stopped typing, in the search input, that's a good example of when to use to bounce. But throttle is used when you're considering the intermediate state. We're scrolling the page of our web application and we want something to happen at a regular interval as it scrolls. We want something to update. So intermediate events for throttle and the final state or the final outcome for debounce. I hope that helps you understand the difference and I will give a link to my debounce tutorial in the description below as well as the end of the video. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.